Welcome to the perspective unit of week four, in which we introduced uh, machine language and wrote some low-level programs in the HEC uh, uh, assembly language. So one question that normally comes up is, um, how does the HEC machine language differ from uh, the machine languages of typical computers, like uh, uh, personal computers? Well, um, the HEC machine language is uh, very simple because it is designed to operate on top of a very simple uh, uh, hardware platform. And uh, we built this uh, computer uh, in purpose as a very simple uh, uh, architecture because we wanted to be able to actually uh, uh, build it in, you know, in the uh, space of a six weeks uh, course. And therefore, the computer is very simple, but uh, uh, it's sufficiently uh, powerful to, uh, to offer almost everything that you need uh, for reasons that I will explain in, in, in just a minute. So typical machine languages are much more uh, uh, rich than the HEC uh, uh, instruction uh, set. They offer more commands, uh, more uh, instruction types, uh, more data types like uh, floating point, and more operations like, uh, for example, multiplication and division. And yet, as I said before, there's no need to worry because uh, all these fancy things that uh, uh, other languages offer can be delivered at the software level, uh, uh, at the higher level uh, of abstraction. And that's exactly what we do in the second part of this course. In Nantu Tetris part two, we build an operating system and uh, uh, we introduce all sorts of uh, operations that are currently not supported by the machine language. So here's the next question. Uh, it looks like in the hack language, whenever you want to do something meaningful, you need two machine language instructions one to address the memory, and one to operate on the selected memory register. Is this the standard way uh, to do things? Noam? Well, most machine languages are more sophisticated and more powerful than ours, and usually do allow you to specify both the operator and the operand in a single machine language command. For example, you can say, I want to add and I want to use this memory location, and put it all in a single machine language instruction. Now, in our computer, in the hack computer, we only have 16-bit uh, instructions. And in 16 bits, it's very difficult to put both, uh, both a lot of information about the operation and a lot of information about the operand. In particular, you can't put a whole memory address as well as more information about what kind of operation you want to do. So in our, in our case, you have to split the point where you specify the address, which requires 15 bits of its own, and the place where you actually specify the operation, which requires a few more bits. In other machine languages, some usually they have wider machine instructions or sometimes even variable width machine instruction, and then they could fit more information into a single machine instruction. That said, the basic idea of taking part of the, of the, of the address on which the machine operation is supposed to work on, taking part of that address from a previous command is not an unusual kind of thing, and many machine languages do have that. So a related question that we often get is that uh, um, the heck machine language indeed has uh, uh, some strange uh, or peculiar syntax rules. Um, can you say a few words about um, the, um, uh, the choice of the syntax and uh, how it differs from uh, the syntax of uh, regular machine languages. Well, unlike high-level languages like uh, Java, uh, machine languages are not designed to make people happy. They are designed to operate on hardware platforms. So uh, the commands of machine language must uh, uh, deal directly with the ALU, with the memory, and the registers. And they must be extremely efficient. And that's one reason why machine languages are so simple as we discussed before. So as we said before, uh, the heck uh, machine language is, uh, is very simple. And, uh, and therefore, we also decided to make uh, uh, the syntax uh, uh, somewhat simpler than, uh, than what you normally find in, uh, in machine languages. Uh, for example, if you want to um, uh, compute uh, addition and store the result in some uh, uh, register, in the heck language, you say something like uh, d equals uh, d plus n. Whereas in a normal uh, machine language, uh, typically commands like this start with uh, the specification of the operator. So normally you will have something like add uh, d uh, along with some address. And uh, you can specify both the address and the register of the destination and the, op 
uh, the, oper the operator in one instruction because normally in machine languages you have 32, 32 bits or 64 bits, so there's enough space to pack all this information into a single command. Whereas in hack, we do only this. Uh, likewise, if you want to uh, uh, put the contents of one register in another register, in heck you say something like uh, uh, D equals uh, M, for example, whereas uh, in a normal machine language, uh, typically you would say something like load uh, D M or something like this, and uh, once again, instead of M, you can write uh, an address and pack all this information into a single instruction. So the last question in this uh, perspective unit is, um, do people actually have to go through the trouble of writing programs in machine language? Well, the answer is that people don't really write programs in uh, machine language. Instead, uh, some developers sometimes write uh, programs that generate uh, machine code, and these programs are called compilers. And a compiler is a program that takes uh, uh, another program written in uh, some high-level language like Java and translates this program into binary code. So in order to write a compiler, obviously you have to understand the machine language that the compiler has to generate. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the second part of the NAND to Tetris course, where we actually write a compiler for a high-level language. And this compiler will generate a hack code that uh, runs on the machine that we build in this course. Now, there's one uh, exception to what I said before, and that is that in some applications, in particular in real-time systems or in applications where performance is incredibly important, uh, programmers sometimes uh, have to look at the uh, uh, gory details of the uh, machine language code if they want to optimize their programs. So. They don't write the programs in machine language, they write them normally in, in, in a language like uh, the C programming language, uh, but once they translate the program into machine language, they look at the code, and uh, if the code looks uh, terribly uh, tangled or unnecessarily long, they can go back and, uh, and rewrite their uh, high-level code. But in the most part, uh, most programmers write in high-level language, and that's it.